I think a lot of people think they get motivated to do something and then there's an action, but it's actually a reciprocal cycle. Sometimes you act and then you get motivated and then you act to do something again. And I think art and society are the same way where most people think art informs society, but I think also society informs art. We can look at certain presidents of the US, not naming any names. We can look at certain political climates. We can look at certain changes in pop culture. Uh, and I think things in society affect things in art. Things in art affect things in society. Art is oftentimes used to describe the conditions that we're in, whether that's economically, socially, politically, and then society will partly mimic those things. They're kind of reflections of each other, at least in my opinion. So my name is Ryan Intua. That's the easy part. Uh, the tough part is the title because I work across a couple different disciplines, but I think the best way of putting it or saying it at this particular junction in time is multidisciplinary artist and designer. And to get more specific for the Respecting the Process studio audience, that is designer, photographer, copywriter, poet, spoken word performance artist, fledgling musician. <laughs> I didn't choose this life, this life chose me. Um, I just, the grand unifying thread between all the things I enjoy and all the things I love to do is design, whether that's graphic, sound design, industrial design. But I started my career as a copywriter uh, at a nutrition agency. And then from there, I got to work with different art directors, creative directors, even account directors. And through the agency model, I was able to just get exposed to different bits of the creative process for a client. And at the same time, get introduced to business fundamentals behind timeline, scope, budget for getting client work done. But then I think it goes further back than that to childhood and just watching music videos growing up, seeing amazing lighting setups and amazing cameras and amazing footage and really cool designs behind typography for Black Flag videos or A Tribe Called Quest videos. So I think it stemmed from music, but then it grew to client work later uh, down the line. I think so many people think that art and business are so separate, right? But then I know some CEOs and leaders that have never worked with any Adobe program and never sketch or never do anything like that, but they're so creative in terms of how they approach solutions for their business, right? And how they think and string things together. Because I think, I think creativity is just a really good way of bridging together little nodes of ideas, right? Whereas with artists, oftentimes they make incredible business people because they're able to, again, think of solutions that are flexible and adaptable and outside the box. And you wanna to talk to an artist about differentiating themselves, it's like the most natural thing. So I don't think they're as separate as most people think they are. A lot of people think they're born into creativity, but they actually grow out of it. Everyone's born jumping on coffee tables or playing on a playground or sketching, you know. You ask an adult to sketch in a sketchbook or fill in uh, an outline drawing, they'll make the sky blue, the trees brown and green, uh, the lake blue as well. But you give a kid that same drawing and they'll just scribble whatever they want. And they'll make the sky pink or the trees gold or whatever they want. And it's just the perfect analogy for the fact that people are born as artists and they're born creative, but education, society, a lot of these pressures that we have kind of hammer that down to the point where people don't think that they're artists or creative people. Back to the business question that you asked, it's so hard for a lot of leaders and business people, in quotes, because I don't think there's as much of a tangible ROI as the impressions, engagement, reach on a post or the metrics you find in Google Analytics. But if you look at the long term, the work that an artist like Stephanie Scott does for Catalyst Commons, or the work that Steph Butari, or Trisha Abe, or people of the like do around the city, it helps to inspire thinking outside of the box that leads to better solutions for problems, right? Because ultimately business is easy, 
but people are really hard. So those solutions and the art that we see in the world really helps us navigate things with people.